It's coming. I'm about to share with you, reveal the plans that they have for us coming sometime here in the summer or the beginning of next year or so. Please stay tuned, friends. I beg you. Have you ever heard of a guy named Donald Barr? Well, he is the father of William Barr. That is Donald Trump's attorney general. During his tenure as headmaster for the Dalton School, he had a role in hiring a very, very unqualified Jeffrey Epstein to teach at one of the most elite private schools in New York City. Epstein was 21 years old, not a college grad, and he still got hired. Oh, and in 1973, Donald Barr published Space Relations, a novel, a science fiction novel about a planet ruled by oligarchs who perform rape and child sex slavery. I know. So, in this novel, Space Relations, Donald Barr, the father of the two-time U.S. Attorney General Bill Barr, served as headmaster of the Dalton School in New York City. He employed a 21-year-old pedophile and a future sex trafficker, Jeffrey Epstein, despite a lack of qualifications. Barr wrote a porno kitsch, which is a British geek culture blog that published reviews and news concerning speculative fiction and other gender fiction, according to the Wikipedia. Of course, it's hard to overlook the first part of the word, porno, and that's pretty much what it was. Yeah, they're all a bunch of perverts. But the book he wrote was supposedly some kind of a sci-fi book where humans from the intergalactic empire, ruled by aristocrats, the human colony on planet Kozar, provides exile for political extremists. It is ruled by a wealthy oligarchal high council of seven nobles with absolute power that has driven them to madness. Barr describes, in disturbing detail, young boys and girls being kidnapped, raped, and used for both slave labor and sex slavery, Epstein would later build a $54 million mansion a mile from Dalton School, where the prosecutor said employees paid numerous underage girls to engage in sex acts with them. However, when William Barr became the attorney general under Donald Trump, he was quoted as saying, I was appalled to learn that Jeffrey Epstein was found dead early this morning. Mmm, or did you plan it, or did you whisk him away to a island, maybe? Who knows? But he was appalled to find this out. It was an apparent suicide while in federal custody. Who controls the guards at the federal prison? Mr. Epstein's death raises serious questions that must be answered. Of course, he'll never uh, find the answers because he's the one that's actually involved in all of the hanky-panky. They wrote books about it. But in addition to the FBI's investigation, he says, I have consulted with the Inspector General who is opening an investigation into the circumstances of Mr. Epstein's death. Well, that was uh, a while back. It still hasn't produced anything, and it never will. Remember those pictures with Donald Trump standing there with Mr. Epstein? Yeah, why do you suppose this William Barr became Donald Trump's attorney general? Maybe it was to put a kibosh on any investigations. But now, guys, maybe you should sit down. Get you a cup of coffee and and listen to this. I'm going to share with you a bunch of information. I'm going to show the evidence that we have. What I don't have 
is a million confessions to the crime. I do have confessions. Many of them we will ignore because they're pretty clever. They have confessed to the crime. They've documented everything they're going to do in the movies, the books. They've stood in front of the camera. They've filmed themselves doing the nasty, dirty, evil, wicked things. But what they've done is, on the other hand, sent spokesmen, people out to say, don't, don't worry. That's just life. Get used to it. And these people that are doing this to you, they don't know what they're doing. So just keep voting them in. It's just all a big mix up. And, you know, just keep not worrying about it. Just keep doing nothing. And, you know, better yet, don't even pay attention. Don't believe it when anybody shows you reality. Don't pay any attention to the man behind the curtain. So, yeah, there is a lot of evidence, and I'm going to show you some of that evidence today. And for those who really are using their cognitive common sense, their brain activity, if anybody's not an imbecile, if you're not absolutely deranged, you will pick up on the truth. Now, do we know every detail of what they're going to do? Exactly how they're going to do it? Not every detail, but I guarantee with what Jesus said they are going to do and with what they say they're going to do and with what they are actually doing and what they have already done and what they're planning. And when you see all these things that I'm talking about come together and you see the genesis of this and the... and how they started it from scratch and built it up and how all the people involved are playing both sides and pretending. And then we find out that they're wicked people. Remember back in the day when we all thought Bill Clinton was just this nice, clean-cut kid? And then we found out that he was running cocaine. Well, his brother, Dave, not him. Oh, okay. What happened to his brother? Nothing. You know, how is it that we never paid any attention that Bush's daddy, Prescott Bush, was financing the whole Bavarian World War II? Was a guy who owned a bank. And these guys are all brothers, and you know that. But I'm not going to carry on with just me sitting here blabbering, telling you my opinion. I'm going to show you some documentation. Now, I've already shared with you that Donald Trump hired an attorney general by the name of William Barr, who beyond any shadow of the evidence presented we have seen, was in cahoots with Epstein. Is it any wonder that William Barr is now pretending that he doesn't like Trump because they got to have their distances? Why is it, do we think that, I mean, are we so stupid to think that Donald Trump is so smart, he ought to be president and he can run a multi-billion dollar company and owns big, the tallest building in every city across the entire world and we think he's only got three billion. But when he says jump, everybody says how high, except for the ones that are persecuting him, right? And those who play the other side. Well, who are these Democrats? What game are they playing? And if the other side that pretends to be a little bit more sane or conservative or Maybe they sound like they believe in the G.O.D. thing. If they don't ever really do anything but just talky-talky-talk, you know, little sound bits for television with somebody like Rand Paul 
talking some real smack against some bad people. And we're like, yeah, give it to them. But nothing ever gets done. Right? And then when they do get into office even and they got the power of Congress, they do nothing but do things to make it look like they're doing something, but they never do nothing. And if you're telling me that they cannot figure out anything to do with this Epstein case and they can't bring anybody to trial and nobody's talking and they're just, you know, we don't know what they're doing. Just be patient. Leave it in the Lord's hands, Dave. Just keep on a voting. Well, wait a minute. Most of you guys who believe in voting for Trump also believe that the election last time was a R-I-G-E-D. And I got a question for you. If it was R-I-G-E-D last time, why do you think it's not going to be an R-I-G-E-D this time? Are you just pretending in your mind, hoping against hope? Friends, that's what we got to stop. We got to do it right now. Because like I said, we can go back to the days of Phil Donahue and Jerry Springer when they paraded these misfits on the television. Nobody liked them. Nobody wanted it. Nobody believed in, you know, a woman's right to kill her baby or a man's right to dress up like a a, a pervert and go into the women, kid's bathroom. Or, or Nobody believed in any of this. But we debated it nonstop till we wanted to vomit. They just kept debating and debating and debating and, and pushing it. And this 1% that, that did these crazy things, we had to change the entire society to accommodate. Now, that wasn't bad enough. Now they want us all, demand us all to accept it in our heart. We, we've got to use certain pronouns. We've got to believe they're forcing you, coercing you to get down and worship, not just to allow the beast. I mean, that's what we did at the beginning. Well, I can't do nothing, but I'll just allow it. Now they want you to, to consent. Will you consent? Will you close your eyes and pretend you see nothing? I see nothing. Remember the movies about the, mm -hmm, the barbarians, how they just look the other way. And, 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 and we were told that's why that crazy evil was allowed to continue. And then we were told that Mao and Stalin and those kinds of people, they got into power as dictators because they didn't have a constitution and they weren't a democracy. And therefore, you see, we're safe over here. Well, democracy is when you do something, you control your leaders, but you already gave up the control. We don't have a Congress. That's a charade. We don't have law. That's a charade. They can take you to court for anything they want. There's loopholes. There's no jury trial. There's behind the scenes convictions and persecution. You know there is no Second Amendment. We have none. We have no right to say what we want, only what we're allowed to say. So why are we pretending that we need to, you know, keep on with this supposed democracy? We don't have one. The corporate leaders of the world are making it so that you cannot buy or sell unless you do what they say. Now, Budweiser's got a picture of some guy dressed up like a pervert on their can. And if you don't like it, you can take a hike. It's over. No more time for voting. No more time for discussion. It's time we get out of the world, separate ourselves, and refuse to Live in the world. Be no part of it. And for those of you, you see, why would I say this? Well, you know, because you guys can make that decision on your own. You don't need me to, to tell you to, to do that. Well, because some of you are beginning to forget. And that's what the gospel was. The good news about the Lord's coming and he loves you. You've got to be reminded the gospel must be preached. And that's what I'm doing. I don't care about the politics. That's over. The devil has, he's the deity of this world. The whole world lieth in the power of the wicked one. Don't get involved. I'm here to remind you what Jesus said. He said, take up your cross and follow me. Let's get the heck out of this world. Don't participate. But go and love your neighbor. Show the, show the example. Win them over by love. But don't lie to them. Don't say, oh, don't worry. Just vote. And, oh, let's be 
patriots and let's go murder a bunch of Vietnamese. Or Stop it. Stop. Stop being an imbecile. Stop doing what they're wanting you to do and thinking what they want you to think and, and allowing what they want you to allow until we become enslaved. Well, oh, too late. That's already happened. We're enslaved now. If you want to live in the cage, you got to wait for the cheese. And if you want some exercise, you got to go around this little wheel. I would prefer going into nature where you got to walk, right, to get something. You got to lift a hammer to make a house. You got to, you know, move some dirt to, to, to make a garden or, or you reach up and harvest the, the food and grind it yourself and make a dinner and, and enjoy the ground and the earth and the wind and the, and the sunshine and, and, and let your feet touch the ground. We are dying. Stop trying to prop up an insane society of slavery. So what I'm going to share with you in this video is some absolute direct evidence that will steer your mind, hopefully, if you listen, to see, to open your eyelids just a little so that you begin to register on the back of your brain the reality of what you're actually seeing. You see it every day, we ignore it, and we move on to the next one. Another disaster, we move on to the next one. Forget the past one. We've already forgotten about the, you know, the, the shoe, B-O-M-B-E-R, or the, or the, you know, the guy, Lazinski, that's out in the woods, you know, was putting in things in the mail, and we forgot the, the, the Middle Eastern, you know, backpack, B-O-M-B-E-Rs. We forgot that. We already wiped them out. Now they're coming for Christians. And they're telling you they're going to hand the world over to the Israeli government, the Antichrist. They're going to build a temple. Trump's already told you what he's going to do. He's the one who made the Fed now during his presidency, established it, got it going. It's going to take effect in July. It won't be just months later. They're planning on making it so that you cannot use anything but their currency. And that's because they can control you with the currency. But I want to share this with you. They're bringing in Chinese troops. I know you don't want to believe it. But they know that there's going to be a lot of us. That today is just maybe a conservative person or somebody who, yeah, I believe in Jesus, whatever. But by the time this happens, you'll start to wake up and you'll be calling yourselves Christians because the real Christians who follow the Lamb, wherever he goes, they're going to be preaching the gospel. I'm going to. I wish you would join me. And as we bring fire down from heaven, and I mean spiritual fire, and truth, the sword of truth is protruding out of our mouth, and the darkness is dispelled every time we speak, because it's the truth, and people see it. They won't like that. And more and more will join themselves to us. It happened in the first century. Christianity grew the more it got persecuted. They're going to persecute us and persecute us until they're starting to, until they Put our heads in a guillotine. And just before your head goes in the guillotine or the riots on the street wipe out your family and they rape and pillage you and your children right before your eyes, you will look to heaven and cry out to the Lord who can save you. And then you will understand. But please, I beg you, before it's too late, heed this warning. Within a very, very short time. Few months to a couple of three years. We do not know the exact day and hour. This country, here in the United States of America, Canada, Australia, and various places around the world, and the entire world. But I'm speaking to you here in America. We are going to be starving. We are going to have the most brutal, evil, wicked, Things going on. There will be martial law and it might not be by the government of the United States of America because they're shutting us down and they're bringing in foreign troops upon our land. And you better wake up. And if you don't believe me, just at least open your eyes and watch this. Okay, now I'm going to share with you a few clips. They're very simple because, look, I could spend all day showing you clips. But this is going to have to suffice this. I'm going to make a relatively short video today. 
And I'm just going to show you some stuff. But when you're watching this, remember the other stuff that we said yesterday. How they are bringing in individuals like Elena Denon and Karina Pataki and Derek Bros, who are pretending like wolves in sheep clothing to be Christians. Karina Pataki says she's a Christian, but will not confess Jesus Christ. And she actually says that Christians are worshiping an evil deity, that, that, that we made a covenant. We made a covenant with Jesus, not any, any evil deity. And they're trying to prepare us Christians for the change, but it ain't the change that we're going to receive in Jesus Christ. And not the rapture she's talking about. They're talking about changing your mind to becoming a vessel for Satan to inhabit. That he might revel in the lewd, wicked acts that he wants you to perform. There's going to be a great orgy of evil. And if you don't make up your mind now, you might not be able to escape. And so therefore, it's important that you remember that these people have been out there for I don't know how many years... Sitchin and Wilenkowski, I keep naming these people because, you know, the Roswell incident in 1940, after World War II, these Project Paperclick individuals, including Elon Musk and his good friend Donald Trump, Brumpf, the Bavarian, they have a plan. They're billion. How do you think they become billionaires? How do you think these people publish books? You, I can't publish a book. People keep saying, why don't you write a book, Dave? There's no way on this earth that I'm going to be noticed by anyone except by the power of the Holy Spirit and, and how the Lord sees or wants me to declare the good news, which will be in his due time. The way he sees us, he sees it fit for us to be able to speak. Perhaps in sackcloth, that's it. We're not going to be financed and they're not going to give us a big book deal and we're not going to be sitting on easy lane sipping our margaritas. So stop dreaming about your luxurious golden toilet seat that you're going to get after you make it big in the market of Bitcoin or or you you somehow hit it big on uh, YouTube and make millions. If you're out there making millions on YouTube or TikTok, it's because you're teaching wickedness, selling your body or something. If you're teaching the truth like I'm trying to do here, they're going to shadow ban you like they're doing me and you're not going to make any money. So you're going to have to make up your mind. Whose side are you on? If you're on the Lord's side, you're going to be persecuted because those who are Christians will be persecuted. But if you want to escape the wrath that is coming, you must make a decision publicly and confess his name before men. And you must understand why, because the great tribulation is upon us and they have intended and planned, just as the Lord says in the scriptures, to murder millions of people. And it's coming very soon. And there's nothing you can do to hide. But you ought to do as Jesus say and when they surround the city and get out. The cities are not a good place for Christians. We need to get in the country where we can perhaps at least when we say, OK, I. I'm hungry and that's a, a temptation for me to take the mark of the beast because I can't eat or buy or sell unless I do and my children might. So we've got to prepare our children and teach them, take them out into the country, show them how to live without the grocery market, without society, without pornography in our phone every five seconds and this perversion and these lies pumped into their kids' minds. So, okay, I think I've said enough. Now I'm going to give you just a few little clips and just hope that you'll remember while you're watching this, all that they've done to lead us up to this point where they're gearing us up for this alien invasion and who knows, uh, P-A-N-D-M-I-C's and earthquakes and they're going to, they're going to pretend all this stuff for a while and it ain't going to be real, but they're going to be trying to bring in this one world government over our dead bodies. But here's the good news. If we stand firm, those who follow the lamb wherever he goes and confess his name, Jesus said, not one hair of your head will be harmed and we shall remain until he comes. And we will be the ones like the stars for brightness that will bring the many to righteousness. So I'm going to go ahead and show you these, these little clips. And you can draw your own conclusions about what they mean or what they purport to uh, tell us about the future. The very, very, very near future. Months away. Okay, guys, watch. The Democrats are a party of pedophiles. 
I would definitely say so. They support grooming children. They are not pedophiles. Why would you say that? Democrats, su Democrats support, even Joe Biden, the president himself, supports children being sexualized and having transgender surgeries. Sexualizing children is what pedophiles do to children. Wow. It's so bad, even the homeless are fed up. You don't have to do shit. But stay in your tent or party, or if you smoke a lot of dope, you can do that. It's like you wake up, you go eat a blanche, get high. Go eat a blanche for lunch, get high. Go eat dinner, get high. And, and that's all you do all day long, every day. Yeah, I'm being honest. I appreciate the honesty. Yeah. Doesn't feel like that's really helping anybody. It's not. I really have no words for this. I really have no words for this. not expecting this this is absolutely insane an app like this to allow illegal immigrants to literally reserve a time to come to the border and then be ushered in without an interview without follow-up without tracking is stunning it's absolutely stunning let me ask you in my very short time remaining is, something is, else about yeah. chinese nationals I've, I've only got a minute left that is false let, let me ask you about about the the chinese nationals who we all saw coming over the border, busloads of them, and then being released in the American interior. What's the what's the percentage increase of Chinese nationals who cross the border this year, Mr. Secretary? Let's just focus on maybe the Rio Grande Valley. Uh, the number of the, the number of Chinese nationals encountered on the southern border uh, has increased significantly. Do you know how much over the past? I don't have the precise. Percentage. I do. It's not. It's nine hundred percent just in the Rio Grande Valley. <laughs>